Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizing team and uh, especially Dr. Vijaypal sir for giving me the opportunity to present here on virtual autopsy in India. And the pros and cons. Uh, I have gone through the available literature and uh, in concise form, I have uh, uh, highlighting here the what is, what is virtual autopsy and what are its pros and cons and current scenario, whether it will be feasible in our country and at present where we are in our country. So first of all, I would like to uh, explain or brief uh, what is virtual autopsy. The term virtual autopsy or virtual autopsy uh, is the term virtual and autopsy. Virtual is derived from the Latin word virtus, means useful, good and efficient. And opsomia means I will see. So autopsy means self see and virtuopsy uh, we replace auto with virtual. Virtual or autopsy or virtuopsy is a multidisciplinary approach that combines forensic medicine, radiology, physics, biomechanics, and computer graphics. It is a minimal invasive emerging technology in the field of forensic medicine that incorporates imaging technology of radiologists and forensic clinicians to reflect an ethical phase in forensic examination. In short, it is a scalpel free technique of performing autopsy. It was first coined by Richard Denofer, a professor in the University of Barnes Institute of Forensic Medicine, Switzerland. It provides a complete inside and outside view of the body in a three dimensional way. Now, imaging. As we are already doing uh, plain radiograph or X-rays since decades in autopsy practice, basically for the identification of foreign uh, foreign objects uh, such as in firearm injuries and even fractures or even in decomposed putrefied bodies, we are doing plain radiographs. With the advent of CT and MRI, the domain of diagnostic imaging has been expanded. So with that, forensic imaging. Now, apart from the X-rays, currently include two cross-sectional modalities also, that is CT and MRI. So these CT and MRI are supplemented by minimus, minimally invasive techniques such as post-mortem angiography, biopsy, and 3D photogrammetry based optical surface scanning. So computed tomography, the most frequent imaging tool in the forensic pathology apart from the X-rays. Now with the latest advancements with the multiple modular scanners or uh, multi-detector CT scanners, uh, 2D and 3D re reconstructions are possible with, uh, after having a slice thickness of 0.5 mm. The main strength of CT lies in the detection and depiction of foreign bodies, fractures, gas, fluid accumulations such as blood. Calcification in coronary arteries and bigger vessels can also be detected with computed tomography. It can also be augmented with postmortem angiography to know the extent of vascul uh, vessel occlusion or where a vascular rupture is, which can be of a great value. So this is a picture of PMCT angiography, which shows a right coronary artery calcification. MRI. MRI by contrast can detect soft tissue injuries and pathologies clearly, which are not visible on CT scan. Postmortem biopsy. While performing postmortem, we have to take certain samples uh, for uh, histopathology, for clinical biochemistry or microbiology. So the sample of organ of interest, such as heart or specific pathologies observed on CT or MRI, such as tumors or any other pathologies can be collected and evaluated histologically using a biopsy gun. Similarly, tissue and fluid samples can also be collected for toxicological and microbiological testing. 3D photogrammetry based optical surface scanning. It's the robotic system which is able to perform automated whole body surface and wound documentation by using digital close range photogrammetry and optical 3D surface scanning. Based on 3D data collected, analysis and reconstruction of forensically relevant events such as traffic accidents, criminal assaults, or homicides can be performed. Current scenario. Multi-slice computed tomography based virtual autopsy being used in routine practice now at centers in countries like France, Germany, UK, Japan, Australia, USA, and Israel. 
and if the circumstances are undisputedly non criminal many death investigating system, uh, investigation systems there allow avoiding mutilating autopsy of a deceased in india so these were the headlines in the newspapers uh, of last year in 20th march 2021 that virtual autopsy uh, facility starts at aims and it was started with the collaboration of icmr so now we come to the pros and cons of the virtual autopsy first we will uh, talk about the uh, pros of the virtual autopsy first is the identification till date identification is primarily done with the dental records fingerprints and dna of the corpse on uh, routine autopsy with the post mortem ct other singular traits enabling an identification can easily be readily found surgical implants in the form of sternotomy wires plates screws pacemakers joint processes etc may be identified quickly and easily which may allow for identification of unknown dead bodies by this way a great number of corpses can be scanned quickly and which can be a valuable feature in mass catastrophe foreign bodies ct can detect a potential foreign body in a 3d manner in a one single examination as opposed to x-ray in which images have to be taken from a multiple angles or at different angles for finding out the exact location of the foreign body the object can be measured very accurately very often in the dimension of less than 1 mm regardless of where it is now as we know the different materials have different uh, how uh, household units hu a more or less precise determination of the substance of a foreign body can be made quickly this feature is extremely helpful or useful for the victims of explosion because aside from the bomb bits this victim may be afflicted with a slew of foreign bodies such as glass shred masonry timber and so on but the investigating agencies are more concerned with the bomb bits so which can be easily identified with the uh, ct scanning virtual autopsy can also be adjuvant to the autopsy it does not necessitate a physical contact or severing of a tissue in order to see the findings forensic imaging can protect practitioners from directly being exposed to unknown infections which is especially crucial during the worldwide covid-19 pandemic implying the inestimable in inestimable societal worth of the forensic imaging the potential of being employed in unanticipated pandemic in the future also it does not interfere with the pre existing structures and can be easily useful in analyzing the community fractures of say the skull which following the repeated impacts or the bullets because whenever there is a community fracture and when we pull out the skull then there is a uh, possibility that the fractures may get dislodged because as per the pubis rule the latest fracture line do not overlap the pre existing one ct scan can readily and simply examine the fracture pattern and establish which strike or gunfire occurred first certain parts of the human body are difficult to inspect such as the topmost segment of the spinal cord which is usually severed when the brain is extracted at autopsy ct can provide information about osseous abnormalities in this area and mri can even scan the spinal cord the face is another area where post mortem imaging is useful the face is often split from dissection so that the next of the kin can see the corpse even after the autopsy the soft tissue and skeleton of the face can be studied non destructively using forensic imaging in medical legal examination the immense value of external examination is undebatable external findings sometimes on autopsy can take hours to get documented however it can be documented objectively in a 3d manner and in a reproducible manner using 3d photogrammetry based optical scanning it is a robotic system which take multiple photographs from the different angles and project in a 3d form so the injury causing object or a structure of vehicle vehicle can be identified using this data demonstration at the court forensic imaging can assist in providing clean blood free photos that are easier to understand than a snapshot of an open body because this snapshot of an open body with blood uh, blood field only physician are familiar with that pictures and such photographs can be seen and appreciate the findings by a physician only while the bloodless photos can be appreciated by the in the courtroom also 
In court, radiological findings like a fracture, retained bullets, and knife points can be demonstrated. Furthermore, the saved data can be recovered long after the burial or cremation of a corpse or the healing of a living victim wounds, allowing for a second examination by a different expert if necessary. Autopsy is prohibited in various religions. Even next of the kin doesn't want autopsy on his dear or near ones from a cosmetic point of view also. Forensic imaging is the best alternative at a, uh, to a regular autopsy, especially when the case is religiously sensitive or the diseased family member cannot accept a traditional autopsy. So these are the few pros. Another is the a new technique, one is the magnetic resonance spectroscopy. It helps in determining the metabolic concentration in the tissues, which further help in estimating the time since death. Now we come to the cones of the virtual autopsy. The color, the texture of the organ, the smell of the body fluids cannot be seen in forensic imaging. While these are of the immense value in the routine autopsy practice, the color and the smell and the texture can sometimes give the clue to the cause of death. Forensic radiology is not a clinical radiology performed on a corpse. In fact, forensic radiologist encounters a wide, wide range of findings that a clinical radiologist would never see. Postmortem artifacts are one of the, uh, them. Liver mortis in the lungs can easily be misinterpreted as pneumonia. Or a putrefaction gases in the soft tissues can mimic emphysema or maggots can be confused also. These are to name a few of the postmortem artifacts which can be confused by a clinical radiologist. Furthermore, significant putrefaction or substantial lacerations may render certain procedures inapplicable, such as postmortem angiography, because the disintegration or damaged vascular bed will not be able to hold the contrast medium long enough for the assessment. CT scanning alone has limitations in detecting soft tissue injury. CT scan can detect a hard objects or the wounds or the fracture or the foreign bodies can be detected. For the soft tissue, we have to rely upon the MRI. And angiography allows detailed examination of the vascular system. So PMCT angiography has the potential to induce a rupture during its performance. So a long CT scan cannot complete a autopsy. For soft tissue, we have to rely upon MRI. So for a complete virtual autopsy, we need a combination of CT, MRI, and postmortem CT angiography. So complex of the procedure may have to be conducted for virtual autopsy. Now coming to the reality, even the larger hospital in our country doesn't have its own CT scanner, let alone an MR machine. Because uh, autopsy is not being conducted in the uh, medical colleges or tertiary care centers only. It is being conducted in the subdivisional hospitals and the civil hospitals also, where we don't even have a CT scan facility. And even in tertiary care centers, there are not enough radiologists who can perform or who can help or aid in assisting the virtual autopsy. It goes without saying that if the funds are made available, they will be used to support the living rather than to examine the corpse, as earlier uh, said by Dr. Harish, uh, sorry, Harish sir in his lecture. There, uh, there are not enough radiologists in the government setup. Furthermore, most clinical radiology departments are already overburdened and have a heavy workload without having to deal with the forensic cases. And they are not even interested to deal with the medical legal cases also. So to conclude with, the need for the non-invasive or minimally invasive postmortem imaging has surged in recent years. Because of ethical and religious concerns, public anxiety about open autopsy has grown. Although the virtual autopsy has its advantages, but the immense value of traditional autopsy cannot be negated. Leave aside the uh, infrastructure and uh, the financial concerns, how to set up, when to set up, uh, it will be difficult, in my opinion, uh, to abolish the traditional autopsy and go to the virtual autopsy. And uh, a mix of procedures such as autopsy, forensic imaging, surface scanning, and so on can be utilized in an optimal way if the condition permits later on, depending upon the situation to situation. These are the references. Thank you.